Rudiger here, and I'm here with husband Liam. Hello. Today is probably our the video we've had the most uh, demands for. People like, want to know more yeah. about laser yeah, since discs. Since the beginning of time, people have been leaving comments going, Hey, we like all these comic reviews, we like your toys and whatnot, but most of all, Tell me about those discs. Tell me about those we're, laser we're discs. We're laserholics and we need to see those discs. <laughs> and so Liam and I have the day off together today. Uh, and this boy really loves collecting an old outdated technology called laser discs. Yeah. Liam, would you like to inform the viewers of what <laughs> a laser disc is? Okay, so a laser disc, they're from the late 70s, but they only gained popularity in probably the 80s. Uh, so they were a direct competition to the VHS. And they like I re I really love them because of their size. They they look a lot like an LP, so they are about about that big. And so they 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 look great. Like I mainly get them for like the cover art and everything. They just look absolutely stunning. And I'll they play that out they the play light. like a VHS, so it has that grainy feel to it. Has the FBI warning at the start. <laughs> um, our laser disc player we got secondhand for sixty dollars at a market. But apparently they can go for hundreds. I've had a look on eBay. So, so this is what a laser disc look like. Look like. Uh, it's a shiny disc. Um, if it gets even one scratch in it, it's pretty much unplayable. As you all know, it, all films, DVDs to Blu-rays, it's the picture quality is getting higher and higher and higher. And uh, for me, I grew up watching these films that had a certain grain to them. And there are some, like, say, if you're watching The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Or Evil Dead. E Evil Dead. You want that gritty look and you want to watch it how you remember it. Today, we thought we would go through, we have how many laser discs do you We've got we heaps. We've only been collecting hundred. since probably last September. Yeah. Yeah, and I bought the laser disc yeah. player for Liam's birthday. Yeah, and so far we're what a master... happy thirtieth birthday he had. You should show the picture. Oh, but insert picture here. This is the moment Liam got his laser disc player. Yeah, it's a, it a good time. It was the happiest day of my life. <laughs> yep, it's uh... like laser disc player wedding. <laughs> Liam, because he's uh, annoying, can't choose, <laughs> can't yeah, choose yeah, just yeah. five, so he has seven. Here we go, let's start off with number seven. Okay, so number seven, and again, this is in no order whatsoever. This is just a whole bunch of laser discs I like, and this is a video for the sole purpose of me showing you laser discs that I enjoy. So, sorry, but you're stuck with it. Um, so, number seven is my Kurosawa's. So I showed Red Beard before. I've got there's Red Beard, Hidden Fortress, which uh, George Lucas uh, notoriously stole many plot points from for the, his famous Star War. Um, and then there's Rashomon, which is amazing. We saw the original film script in Japan last time we went. That was pretty I, magic. I, I made you go to the um, the museum of. Film, I think like eight times because it was, it was never open and we couldn't read the opening hours, so we had to go to the film place like three or four times and Lingo to see the script. So yep, yep, I'm good. a fanboy. Um, then there is Seven Samurai, which is considered his most famous, most popular. It was remade into the uh, what was it? The Fantastic Magnificent Seven. Which is being remade, I think, this year or next year. Who cares? Just watch Seven Samurai. It's amazing. <laughs> uh, and my, they're probably, I say seven, but it, this is my top of, out of all my Kurosawa's. This is Throne of Blood. Uh, this is a retelling of Macbeth. And it's done at, like, his castle is Spider's Web Castle. And it's, uh, yeah, it runs through the exact same plot as Macbeth, but in a very... Edo period Japanese uh, samurai film way. Watch a man terrified as people shoot real arrows at him. It's great. <laughs> and now it's time for Liam's number six. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going again. Yeah, because oh, you chose oh, seven. This is like Christmas. <laughs> um, okay, so again, uh, so as you notice with the Kurosawa's, they were Criterion's, and any film aficionado knows that Criterion's are the number one. Um, but so yeah, they go into the game at Laserdisc, and one of the one of my all-time favorite films ever in my top five of all time is Akira, and that was actually released through the Criterion Collection. And so far, this hasn't been reissued through the DVD or the Blu-ray releases. Do you want to show them the trifold? But, yeah, so it's got a beautiful uh, gatefold, but. Oh my god. Look, Whoa! it keeps going. It's oh, it's incredible! 
<laughs> and so uh, you're probably wondering, it's just like, oh, that, that's, that's, that's pretty big. Why would they need so many discs? Well, well, one thing we didn't cover at the start is that laser discs, you have to flip. <laughs> oh, yes. So Liam gets very excited when we're watching a laser yeah. disc because it gets to like halfway through the movie and it stops and it's just a black screen and you know it's time to flip the, flip the disc. disc. The Akira laser disc is one of my favorites because on the Blu ray release and also the DVD release, they cut out my favorite dub. And I know that will hurt a lot of people to hear, but I my favorite version of the Akira is, like I said, because this is all nostalgia, is the version I grew up watching, which is the original 90s mono dub. Voiced Akira. by Leonardo. Voiced by Leonardo. Canada is Leonardo. And if you haven't watched From the Akira, Ninja Turtles. it's absolute masterpiece of hand-drawn animation written and directed by Katsuhiro Otomo, who also did the six volume manga. Finally, I get to be in the video. Whoop, 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 whoop. It's, a, it's time for laser disc number five, <laughs> which, is, which is how many <laughs> laser discs we're meant to actually be talking about. Uh, my number five is the Disney movie that I grew up on. It's Jungle Book. Uh, it's got beautiful cover art, has him on the back eating bananas. Uh, this was my ultimate favorite Disney movie um, when I was growing up. And on VHS, I used to sing along to every part and do the dance with the Monkey King. Boop, boop, boop. Uh, you can now tell how different Liam and I's taste in film are. My number five is, again, to show how different we are in our taste, is Man Bites Dog. Now, this is a French, uh, a low budget French film. And one, another reason why we love Laserdisc is it goes through the 90s, which is the greatest film period of all time. Because it had the birth of like that really, uh, like that great independent cinema that was so experimental that it's just, even in the 2000s, they, they didn't really get that energy. Anyway. And it man, gave birth to Paulie Shaw. And it gave birth well. to Paulie Shaw. Man Bites Dog is a great French film about a film crew following around a hitman and slowly, and he's a very charismatic hitman. It's a, it's a he's very- He's a bit it's, too charming. He's, it's a very black comedy. He's very charismatic. And uh, yeah, so he, Man Bites Dog, very dark. Incredibly dark. Adults it's, it's only. Beautiful black and white. And yeah, again, it's Criterion. Hot tip, this is the uh, redone cover. The original cover had him shooting a baby in the face. <laughs> <laughs> you can see why they changed it. Number four is the opposite to every movie that Liam ever likes, but he really enjoyed this film I when love, we watched I it recently. I love that movie. It's charming, it's wonderful, and it's Chu Wong Fu. Thanks for everything, Julie Newmark. Worst title in uh, cinema history. Shut up. Shut up! <laughs> it stars Wesley Snipes, Patrick Swayze, and John Leguizamo. They play three career-driven women heading across the country to the drag queen beauty pageant. Only one can be reign supreme champion. Uh, along the way, their car breaks down, they get stuck in a tiny little town who've never seen anyone as fabulous as those three women. Uh, and there's a cherry pie eating contest, and people fall in love, and there's such fabulous costumes and singing and dancing. Oh my goodness, it's so much fun! Yeah, uh, like, I I originally saw it as just a real weird American remake of Priscilla Queen of the Desert, but it, it has a lot of heart to it. Like I, so I bought it for her as a joke because I knew she liked it as a kid. I was just like, there is no way this film is going to hold up. It's going to be the worst. And we've got a habit of buying each other really bad gifts. Like I got Liam Free Willy 2 recently for our 12 year anniversary gift. Free Willy 2. We don't even own Free Willy 1. Uh, but anyway, this this movie is charming. I grew up on it. I rented it every time I got to at the VHS store, and now I have it in beautiful laser disc form. Okay, my number four is again one of my favourite films of all time. That was a holy grail as well. I haven't seen this available at all online since. So. Tetsuo the Iron Man. It's a fantastic indie Japanese film from the very, very early 90s, directed by master Shinya Tsukamoto, yep. who, and it's just, it's kind of like an allegory of what he was going through at the time. It's a film about a young man who wakes up one morning and he's sprouting scrap metal from his body. Slowly, he just turns into this machine. And like I said, it's like a, it's his, pretty much a big middle finger to his dad who wanted him to be a salary man and yeah it's him it's a story about the horrors of becoming part of the Tokyo machine when him himself wanted to be a creative he wanted to be an artist he wanted to be a director and at that time 
every, everyone just hated that. And he was en ended up living on the streets by this stage that he made this film. Anyway, we met him last year. It was year. a huge moment for Liam. Yep. I was so excited for him. I like had a pen ready and I was shaking. And the minute he finished talking, I like ran down to make sure we got to meet him before he left. Yep. And we were the very first people to meet yep. him. It's time for number three. Woo! <laughs> uh, people that know me well know that I love John Waters. I've looked up to him and Divine for most of my life. I had the pleasure of meeting John Waters many, many years ago mm. with Lee Ham. And it was such a magic moment to be able to talk to him and thank him for being so rad. Um, the thing with John Waters films is that no matter what he wanted to create, if people said it was gross or disgusting or crap, he still went ahead and made it. He had a vision and he stuck to it. Uh, this is called Polyester. I'm not going to tell you what it's about. I want you to watch it for yourself, only if you're over the age of 18. Uh, what you should know about Polyester is when it came out in the movie theaters back when it was originally released, it came with an Odorama card, which is this. Yes, this laser disc still has an Odorama card. It's a scratch and sniff card, never been used, and at separate points throughout the movie screening, you would scratch and sniff the smell on the card. They were not pleasant smells. They made you uncomfortable, made you feel sick, and it was totally ingenious. Such an amazing idea that now they use in like theme parks all the time with scents coming mm. through in the 4D movies and things like that. But John Waters was ahead of the game, yeah. came up with this idea for making people more uncomfortable <laughs> in his films, which I just think is incredible. Okay, my number three is, again, one of my favorite films ever. It is uh, Chow Yun-Fat and John Woo's classic, The Killer. So this is probably my favorite film that they did together. As you know, they're one of the best creative duos in film history. Only second to probably Werner Herzog and Klaus Kinski. Hello, my <laughs> name is Werner Herzog. You have no idea I how like many times dark chocolate. She... Oh my God. <laughs> Anyway, continuing. She practices this so much. Anyway, this is The Killer. It is absolutely phenomenal. It's about a hitman who accidentally blinds a jazz singer one night after a hit. Like, he fires his gun and she goes blind. And anyway, after that, he goes to protect her and as things go on it just gets more and more violent and in a very if you're familiar with the work of John Woo and Chow Yun Fat you'll know that it, their squibs are plenty lots of squibs back in the 90s when they still use squibs <laughs> there are these blood packs that actually burst out because they didn't have CGI and for a while there this actually had the biggest body count in history that's that's amazing yeah and again it's one of those uh, try gatefolds Whoa! Whoa! Amazing. Number two. My number two uh, is one of the greatest things in the entire world. It's Babysitter's Club. I Say hello to my friends. Say hello to your friend, Babysitter's Club. I have loved Babysitter's Club my entire life. If any of you have been watching this channel for any length of time, you would know that I collect Babysitter's Club everything. I did a Babysitter's Club lookbook. I worked on it for months and months to try and look like every Babysitter's Club member. My favorite member is Cordia. I always looked up to her. Oh, she's not on the front. They've got no respect for her. <laughs> just... <laughs> she's on the back. Okay, Claudia's on the back. Here she is. She's fantastic. Baby Sears Club is about a group of teenage it's girls. It's a lot of sunflowers. It's a lot of sunflowers. Very 90s. It's about a group of teenage <laughs> girls and they babysit for money. And my, my number two is one that's notoriously known for having disc rot. So if you... You like, have to explain what a disc rot okay, is. Okay, so before I show you my number two... This here is not my number two. This is Damnation Alley, starring Jean Michael Vincent. Got a Michael down your Vincent's. Anyway, Got a Michael them down. so this one, like I ordered, I was so excited for it to come, and then it has disc rot, as you can see all, all around there. It's you, can, you can see the camera. So my number two, no, that's out of the way, is Howard and Maud. This is not a Criterion. This is my preferred cover for it as well. There's another one which just had a stand, stock standard like photo cover on the front. Anyway, I, I sought out this one. Yeah, the cover art is amazing. Yeah, this is one that I think Wes Anderson owes his entire oh, Wes career Anderson to. Wes Anderson totally copied part. <laughs> yeah. like, I'm a huge Wes Anderson fan. It's a no, I'm not being offense to him. Um, but he totally copied the feeling and ideas of Harold and Maud. It's such a charmingly odd film. Yeah, and there's, uh, it's like all Wes Anderson films, there's so much, um, symmetry to it. 
and the themes are very dark but darkly sweet at the same time. As like, if anyone knows the film, you'll know it's uh, about a young boy who has suicidal tendencies, but not in a way that he ex actually ever feels like carrying through the act. It's more like just to get attention and more just having fun with his parents because he finds his mum so bizarre and she has a lot of wealth and takes everything for granted and he's just pretty much figuring his place in life and if she takes him for granted. And so she's trying to find him a beautiful wife and throughout this, it, this film chronicles this process of him just trying to get away from it and just kind of trying to freak out every potential suitor his mum sets up for him all the while falling in love with a I think she's a 80 year old woman I think she's 80 yeah and it's just it's such a beautiful love story and it's it's just great so if you haven't seen Harold and Maud number one <laughs> Uh, my number one is veering away from Liam's serious fun times of Harold and Maud, and it's time for the Brady Bunch movie. I love, love, love the Brady Bunch. I grew up on the Brady Bunch. I rewatched. I don't know how many times I've watched this movie. Yeah, even since we've got the laser disc, every time I go to watch something, I pull out the tray and it's just like <laughs> Brady Bunch staring back at me. And I'm like, oh, come on. Okay, anyone that's a fan of the Brady Bunch, do every time you go on that escalator, you go, I think, God, go for a walk, God. And you do and you like have to that. Do the... Whoa, whoa, <laughs> on it. Oh my goodness. Okay, so Brady Bunch, this is the best cast. It's so funny. It's so 90s. And it's all the iconic kind of 90s, like grunge rock. Oh my goodness. It's so much fun. Fun. Dad, uh, there's a Brady on our lawn! <laughs> <laughs> Like, that was the highest I've <laughs> ever made my voice. I, I think I, I might be one of the only people in Australia who are buying Laserdisc. I would and probably I'm, say so. Until yeah, yeah. until he started telling one of our best friends about how great Laserdiscs are. And now that guy, Hi Benjamin, goes and finds Laserdisc for Liam. Uh, it's a good time. It, they he, have a great he actually, time he together. found our um, polyester with the, the unscratched sniff card. Yeah, Ben's pretty great. <laughs> Okay, my number one. It's meant to be one. Yeah, it's that's it's, like six. It's one experience. Anyway, my my number one is Twin Peaks, and as I was saying before, here, here, I'll hold them up here. As I was saying before, we uh, collecting. This set is pretty expensive, and I actually got all of these for thirty dollars <laughs> Australian, which is pretty insane so for us i'd say that's probably like about 19 dollars us for every single uh, <laughs> uh twin peaks laser disc and so as you can see the the discs themselves are pretty uninspired but it's it's like the show the, box art, the show the box is art's really great the show is so awkward and so bizarre that it kind of makes sense to have them look so cheesy and so bad uh twin peaks is one of the greatest television series of all time. It's about a small town of Twin Peaks and after the death of a young girl named Laura Palmer, a big city FBI agent comes to town to pre pretty much like grill every single resident of Twin Peaks in his own quirky way while drinking copious amounts of coffee and just figuring out what exactly is going on in his own whacked out There's some way. really fun characters in that show, yeah, like the, the log woman. The log lady, there's like a, like the coffee shop itself is a character. The guy with, you um, said there's a fish in his percolator? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Even though we should be wrapping up this video, I want to talk about uh, the ones we really want. So our holy grails, our wish Okay, list. my holy grail is any poorly Shaw. So I have one poorly Shaw in the army now. It is a most prized possession, but also his worst film. Anyway. I love Paulie Shaw. I want all the Paulie Shaws. Encino but I think Man, Son-in-Law. Yeah, but what mostly else? Son- I think I Jury just want Jitty? Son- Yeah, but I just want Son-in-Law. The hot dog killer? Sounds what you're I want Son-in-Law. You want Son-in-Law. That's your number That's one. That's my number one. That's you number you get one. to choose one. You can choose one okay. that you want. Okay, my... One. My one, number one, is uh, there's the blood red edition of Evil Dead 2. Yes, you do want that. Yeah, yeah, the disc is actually blood red. Uh, my other number one is Free Willy 1 to go with his Free Willy 2. It's his Free favorite Willy. film of all time. My other number one laser disc is what I had talked about before the Shinya Tsukamoto collection. It's in Japanese. There is, it's not subtitled, but it has. 
uh, Phantom of Regular Size. It has Tetsuo Iron Man. It has Tetsuo Body Hammer on it. So we're going to have a look when we're in Japan later this year. See if yeah. we can find it. Yeah. Fingers crossed. And so that's, again, my, my number one. And what's your number one that you want? And my other number one is probably my favorite Jackie Chan movie of all time, which is The Dragon Lord. And a, a lot of people would consider like Project A, Drunken Master 2. I was about to say, what Drunken Master? Yeah, Drunken Master 2, Legend of the Drunken Master is, is up there. Same with Police Story. I've got Police Story 3, Super Cop, on its way from the US. Every, as, as every couple speak. of days we have um, to run down to the PO yeah. box to get a laser disc. Yeah. But The Dragon Lord was, the one I always loved as a kid. It was it balanced the martial arts and the comedy the best for me. Sadly, all good things come to an end. We, we want must, to we must break your hearts and leave you. <laughs> we hope you enjoyed our little chat about laser discs. Liam is very passionate about it and he's will be wanting to make this video with you. Guys. She, she had to cut me off. I'd, I'd go through every single disc in our collection. Hey, can you see the Red Sonia? That's an awesome cover. And also, like, this one behind us, the Warriors. Check out that as well. This is why you collect laser discs. Look at this art. That cover art. Look at this. Rumble in the Bronx. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Liam loves laser discs. We love you guys. Let us know if you collect laser discs in the comments down below. What's your favorite? Oh my god. <laughs> I can't even show you the back of this. It's so inappropriate. Uh, okay, I'm gonna go now. I hope you guys are having a great week. Uh, and please let us know what your favourite laser disc was. Oh my goodness, you have no idea how many laser discs he has. It's just. Ugh. Bye!